All right. Um, okay, and we're live, uh, and we have Gloria too. So, uh, what's up, everybody? Uh, Connor here from the Gitcoin team. Um, here with a few others who have all been involved with the Green NFT uh, grant and hackathon, and we're excited to have you. So, um, for some context, we're just going to be. This is kind of a casual session today. We're going to be giving a quick overview of the bounties. Um, we'll hopefully. Uh, give you guys some time to maybe come on stage and introduce your idea or talk about your project, even demo if some of you already. Um, and then we'll just kind of break into open discussion and, and see if there are any questions. Uh, but yeah, so um, before we kick off, I guess, do you guys want to do some quick introductions? Sure, ladies first. Oh, thank you. Um, that's great to be the only lady. So I always get first. Um, I'm uh, Fanny, I've been helping uh, Jason with the green NFT uh, initiative, more on the community side and trying to um, get more people involved. Uh, as I strongly believe we need more of like self-regulation in the space and like trying to organize ourselves, uh, you know, to make things happen. I think that was very much uh, in it and on, you know, my regular job is more on the art and NFT um, uh, advisory. So um, fun ride. Cool. Daniel, you want to introduce yourself? Sure. I, I'm uh, Daniel. I, I work at Stakefish, a proof of stake validator. I do protocol and governance there and helping out with some of the green NFT initiatives. Cool. So yeah, um, I'm Jason Bailey, better known as Art Gnome. Uh, super, super excited um, that you've all chosen to participate uh, in this bounty and that you're here today. Could be more excited to, to learn about the projects that you're working on. I've been talking to the press a bunch. Actually, the Financial Times in the last two days are, are very interested. Um, so I think we're going to get some visibility and they'd like to learn, as I think would, would all of us, a little bit more about the kind of projects that are getting done. Um, I started the, the Green NFTs initiative because I love this space and um, like a lot of these folks have been involved with it for the last four years. And when I saw um, sort of a, a lot of the negativity warranted, but you know, negativity around the ecological implications of NFTs, it got past the point where um, it was no longer useful just to point out the problem. And I was really eager to help see the community come together and have an opportunity to have some ownership over the problem and, and work together to help educate artists, you know, lots and lots of artists were coming to me and saying, look, there's there's conflicting information out there, lots of smart people, but they seem to disagree with each other. We don't really know what we can and can't do anymore. Um, and then just to show that, you know, um, we expect the community to put decentralized solutions, right? So NFTs are a thing, not because some company made them a thing. They're a thing because we made them a thing as a community, right? So a lot of times I get um, people kind of trolling me saying like, why do you think you know green NFTs and these teams are going to be able to make a dent in this when there are companies that are spending millions of dollars? And I remind them that you know uh, this having a centralized um, you know authority come in and solve this problem isn't going to work long term. So our goal is really to build that muscle, right, so that we can own these things as a, as a decentralized community and come together and and come up with uh, solutions on our own. So super proud that that it's come together the way it has. Um, I, I ended up doing probably the least amount of work other than being the cheerleader. These uh, other folks um, have been uh, super helpful, as have the uh, the Mint Fund guys who are sort of like our sister um, cause and uh, really helped me get up and running. So I have a tendency to talk too much, but really I want to do more listening. So I'll, I'll shut up. No, that was very well put. Thanks, Jason. Um, cool. So I guess let's start diving into things. Um, I'm going to share my screen very quickly. All right. Um, you guys probably know um, this event's been going on since uh, late March, since like towards the end of the Grants Round 9 uh, uh, CLR matching process. Um, but yeah, uh, like Jason said, we're trying to figure out solutions for more ecologically friendly NFTs. Uh, I imagine many of you have seen the bounties, but we'll probably do a quick walkthrough um, of them right after this. But I just wanted to say, so we we made the decision to extend uh, this hackathon another another two weeks, um, just because I, I think we saw some good work in progress, but we wanted to make sure everyone felt like they had enough time to you know submit their best work here. And so the new end date is going to be May seventh. Um, it'll it'll wrap up at uh, midnight or eleven fifty nine p.m. UTC on the seventh. Um, so just so everybody knows um, that 
that that's the new end date. And yeah, and so we're gonna walk through these bounties. Um, I'm gonna hand it off to Daniel in a second. Uh, and then I wanna talk about regen a little bit too, because I think there may be some confusion here on like the token. Um, they actually just launched their mainnet today and uh, their token is now about to be live. And so uh, we may be edit this, but um, that their prize is super interesting. I think they have a, they have a really cool uh, platform that um, is just kind of getting started here. So the last thing I wanna say before we dive into the bounties is uh, thank you to all of the supporters of the grant. Um, some of you donated to this, uh, but we've, so I think the there's been over 50K raised. Um, I think that number is even higher now with like the appreciation of, of ETH and some of these tokens. Um, and on top of that, uh, the the match um, also was paid out from the, the solar pool. Um, so there's a lot of funding here. Um, as you can see with the prizes, there's still 25K USD for each of these bounties. And I think any additional funding we're gonna be able to reserve and actually do some either more events or just more bounties in the future. Um, so just thanks for everyone's support. Um, and uh, and yeah, we, we hope to do more of these events in the future. So I'm gonna hand it off to Daniel just to walk us through the bounties. Um, if anybody has questions along the way on a specific bounty, um, you know, what the scope is, what submission should look like, definitely feel free to drop those questions in the chat and we'll try to uh, respond to them as we go through. Cool, uh, you guys can see my screen. Yeah, so we'll have, uh, basically we started with three bounties. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. So awareness bounty, which is a little less technical, but it, it wants to kind of uh, help people aggregate resources and find kind of like the, the variety of, of solutions that can help um, facilitate uh, the, ecolog the ecological questions that we have on NFTs and how we can offset them. Um, we also have the solutions bounty, which is more technical in nature for some uh, out of the box thinking to complement these the, these types of um, applications that we can have with that are NFTs that are green in nature. And then finally, we have like the regen bounty um, that is specific to a, a network or a layer one blockchain called uh, regen, which is based on Cosmos. And then they, they basically offer a platform to kind of verify specific types of carbon credits, mint them, buy them, and then also package them into to NFTs. Well, um, yeah, so I, I, we will have like tables uh, after our, our, our presentation that you can ask more questions at. Um, but yeah, well, I think like we have like a, a nice panel of judges that Jason has kind of set up. Um, and then right, if you can click on basically each of these links, if you go to Gitcoin, it's green NFT page, and then you'll have all of this information available. Awesome, yeah. Um, I see one question came in. Is there a rule on which blockchain you have to build on to, to get bounties? Um, so let me, I'm gonna pull up my screen again. Um, so I believe, so this first bounty, the awareness prize, we did specify um, that it's RC721 NFTs. So it should be on Ethereum or around Ethereum. I know that there's a lot of, um, you know, like layer twos and side chains that, that are kind of coming out. Um, and I think that's all fair game for this one. Uh, but we are imagining it would be focused on Ethereum. Is that, that's correct, Daniel? Yeah, that's correct. Uh, the regen is uh, regen specific, though. But yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, and then the second one. So we we didn't specify on the solutions prize. Um, however, are you would are are you open to submissions that are on other chains, or or are you still thinking this will be purely ERC seven twenty ones? So I mean, my expectation didn't mean to cut you off, Daniel. Is that we uh, ideally we want solutions for the some of the dominant chains where most of the nfts are being traded um but at least my understanding is that you know we're open to um to other solutions i don't know there may be additional restrictions there daniel that you can speak to um, i think in the original document that i wrote up when when i put it out to the community i said that it's probably beyond the scope of this particular bounty to take um, an entirely new chain um, or new solution from zero to popularity. Um, but since then, we've seen some other chains start to get some traction. So uh, I don't know, Daniel, do you have anything you'd want to add to that? I think that's that's good. Yeah, solutions and um, yeah, applications, bounties can be 
basically, uh, as you'd mentioned. Regen is just, the regen is its own network, so that would just be associated with Yeah. Yeah, moving on to the regen one. So um, so the prize here is, is 10K uh, USD in regen tokens. Uh, and the reason why that's not actually listed here is because their token was not live when this event started, um, which is actually really exciting because um, they, they they actually just had it. I think it's either going on right now or it just ended, but they just did a big like launch and, um, as well. And so their mainnet uh, just went live today. Um, you can learn more on their website, um, but essentially the, the tokens will be live on chain uh, starting today. Um, and by the time this, this hackathon ends, they'll be fully transferable. Um, the prize will be $10,000 worth, uh, regardless of whatever price the, the token's trading at. Um, and I believe they just finished a, a token sale in the last few weeks or, or months. Um, and so there's a lot of information you can kind of find on this token, but I think it's it's going to be exciting. I think there's a lot of people highly anticipating it. Um, and so personally, I would be super excited to, to receive these tokens. Um, I think I think it's a really cool project um, that has a lot of potential. Uh, but yeah, so just want to like note that at a notice there's been fewer people working on this bounty compared to the other ones um but but if you are interested um learn more about region uh take a look at this bounty um and uh get some of these freshly minted tokens yeah and as kind of like a low-hanging fruit right if you look at some of the the uh, suggestions right we've we've added quite a few bullet points of examples that you can do as well as my own kind of concept that is almost finished. It's, it's just left for anyone to pick up and, and implement. So uh, very big. Awesome. Yeah. Um, and I guess I'm just noticing this now, but so say somebody does um, like the carbon credits idea um, on regen, are they eligible for both of these, uh, both of these bounties? Uh, the tokenized that you were talking about, like having like a, a tokenized carbon credit wrapped with an NFT on regen, right? Yes. Maybe if they're able to find a solution to kind of bridge that over, like a tokenized carbon credit mm -hmm. on regen, which is on Cosmos, and then bridge that over to Ethereum and then have that create a green NFT on Ethereum, then I, I don't see why not. But they would have to pr provide that spec or use existing bridges like Gravity or. Mm -hmm. cool cool all right just yeah just an idea there um and then the last thing i just wanted to like kind of note here is so th this isn't typically how we how we run like or how we structure prizes um but basically there's no specific like first place second place third place and it's not going to be winner take all um the judges are going to look at every submission that that comes in every project and basically we want to reward as many people as possible um, and so I think, you know, the, the, the top submission, the, the one, you know, that's best build or, or that the judges like the most uh, will receive the highest amount. But we're going to, the judges essentially have the ability to split this to pool up among all the entries as they kind of see fit. Um, and so we want to make sure um, everyone's aware of that and that, you know, we get as many submissions as possible because I think every, every valid submission that kind of fulfills the criteria uh, will get some, some form of, of prize. And so... Uh, the amounts will be flexible, but um, we want to kind of spread the wealth here and um, get as many people uh, uh, compensated as possible for for both of these two bounties. Jason, awesome. do you want to say something about the the judges? Yeah, sure. So um, intentionally tried to choose some judges, OG crypto art judges that uh, people would respect for their their contributions. I absolved myself from judging day one just to avoid any kinds of interest. So, so far we have uh, Matt and John, the, the two creators of CryptoPunks, um, agreed to judge and also made a pretty healthy um, donation. Uh, so super grateful to those guys. And then uh, Lady Fee, who um, is the primary person that's brought the NFT community over into Clubhouse and really done an amazing job of building the community there. And I think we'll probably add, you know, one or two more judges. But the way I envisioned it from the beginning is rather than having a bunch of milestones or something like that, we'd keep it simple and let the judges, you know, um, go through and figure out how they wanted to um, uh, allocate the funds. Although 
Fanny, maybe you can talk a little bit about the um, the quadratic uh, voting and how that might come into play. Again, our goal here is to try to do something that's fair and really rewards um, anybody who, who makes a, a significant contribution um, and to sort of reinforce this concept that it's a problem that we're trying to solve as a community. So I kind of dig the, um, the, the quadratic uh, voting approach, but I'm not good at explaining it. So <laughs> maybe Fanny can give an, over, an overview. Sure. Uh, so um, like the quadratic voting and uh, actually quadratic funding uh, that uh, Gitcoin uh, uses for the uh, grant uh, matching pools um, have been theorized, uh, I mean, by many people, but by uh, Glenn Weil uh, in a book called Radical Markets in um, probably now 2017-18. Uh, and uh, and from that book, uh, uh, he actually like Glenville created uh, like a more like a economic like I mean democratic movement. Uh, and you can think about it as like the SRM chapters versus the SRM foundation. Uh, so we 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 did uh, like it's called radical exchange now. And the goal of uh, this foundation is to um, help um, like spread out like better mechanism designs to uh for voting for uh like any civic tech uh, uh out there uh and uh i know that uh the kevin uh Woki, uh the founder of, of gitcoin uh worked a lot with vitalik uh, buterin on uh, theorizing and implementing uh, this quadratic funding uh for the grants uh and uh and glenn while uh, worked as well with Vitalik. So Vitalik is really at the center of uh, these concepts uh, and uh, and is working a lot on like refining uh, every step of the grants, you know, has been a little bit refined. And to explain a bit more like how, why it's relevant, uh, like the quadratic voting to a, a hackathon is um, the fact that uh, quadratic voting is helping to um, actually you ha you don't have like a one person one vote it's pretty much like a multi uh, vote per person so let's say you have like a hundred credits everybody has a hundred credits and you have uh, six projects and you don't have to say okay this one wins and I put one vote on on this one you can actually allocate your hundred credits to different uh, uh, projects. And the way it works uh, is if you feel very strongly about one project, you can put more uh, voice credit on, um, on, on one project you love, uh, but it's gonna cost you extra uh, for this extra attention you wanna put to, uh, to that project. So that's why it's called quadratic, uh, because it's like quadratically more expensive to um, uh, add more votes uh, to a project. And the idea behind, and I'm probably not the best one neither to like explain the mathematical, um, um, the economical um, theories behind it, but it's really to avoid the like one winner takes all, and also uh, to uh, be able to um, uh, really express your strong things towards one uh, one project and like having a few like voices being heard uh, better. So it's. Um, it is a better way. We did try it at uh, at a few other hackathons uh, before. Uh, Eastery was one of them, uh, and uh, and it's pretty much quadratic voting is currently being used in some states. Uh, for, for example, in Colorado, uh, it's used by the governor's office to take budget decisions uh, and so on and so forth. So it's actually a good uh, a good way to, uh, to test new tools with an actual use case. Uh, and um, yeah, so that's we'll probably publish uh, a bit more you know information that makes sense not just me rambling uh and uh but that's uh something we wanna we wanna do um because it's in line with gitcoin as well with helping so much uh on uh, on that hackathon definitely yeah i mean this you know a lot of the funding for this event came from you know, quadratic funding so it'd be really cool to use quadratic voting as well to you know, figure out how the prize money gets distributed. So, um, so yeah, anyway, we'll, we'll keep you guys updated on that, but I'm excited to see what we can do with the judging process here. Um, cool. And then I guess going back one more thing to, to region network. So 
Quite literally. Um, I know I we didn't plan this on purpose, and it, it's kind of unfortunate because otherwise Greg from Regen would probably be here. But like I said, today is mainnet launch. Um, it's it's going on now. Um, I believe they're actually live like right now on Crowdcast. Um, so after this call, if you guys do want to go hop over and and check that out, I think you could catch the end of it. Um, but they should be talking about their mainnet launch, their token, um, and answering questions there. So just uh, just head to the Regen Twitter, and you should be able to uh, find the link if you're curious. Um, cool. And so I think we answered the questions that came up. Uh, we will have the recording of this after, so we can we can share it with you guys if you're curious. Um, but yeah, so we don't have a strict like uh, you know plan for the rest of this call. I wanted to give an opportunity for anyone in in the crowd to come on stage if you'd like. Um, you can either introduce yourself, talk about the project you're working on. Um, if you're still you know going through ideas or potentially looking for teammates, you can you know talk about like your skills and what kind of teammates you're looking for, um, or just uh, come say hi and, and you know uh, basically open offer um so you guys should be able to raise your hand if you do want to come on stage and say hi um or i can i can invite people to stage if they uh say anything in chat looks like josh just wanted to say hello and then and then if we run through this and you know people don't want to come on the main stage um, we can break out into the tables which uh, has a maximum of eight people per table but that might be a better way to to start some discussions so uh yeah just leaving it open josh what's up hey guys good to see you all josh. you too what uh are you working on something for this hack or are you just um well we yeah. submitted actually our whole tech stack basically to the to the green NFT hackathon. We were part, I don't know if you guys saw the carbon drop on Nifty Gateway. That was $6.6 .6 million raised for climate change. Um, we powered the whole offsetting part of that. Um, and that was all to offset those NFTs and it's all done ERC 721 year two. Um, so we just submitted that because we said, let's just give this to the community because this is something we work on, something we build. Um, and we were hoping, you know, that you guys come can talk to us about it because it's really cool. Um, there's a lot of a lot of stuff we're working on. <laughs> that's that's one of them. But yeah, just wanted to come come say hi. I mean, we've been in I don't know how many Gitcoin grants now, but uh, we're always building stuff. That's super exciting. Can you tell us a little bit more about your group, Josh? Yeah, definitely. So, uh, so Creole, we've been working on this for about two and a half years now. Um, basically, what we primarily built was a commercial building control system that. Or real time carbon offsets itself. And the entire thing is tracked on chain, so you can verify everything, including the assets that we bring on. Um, so we ended up building a lot of smart contracts that handle tokenization of carbon assets and those types of things. And then last year, we released it as a consumer product that you can basically sign up with a credit card and, and, pay, and sign up with an email and pay with a credit card and uh, basically offset your life subscription every month and that whole thing is run like on chain but we do everything possible to make it super accessible for people um and so like we really try to abstract a lot of the complexity of blockchain out of it so it's like easy oauth wallets gasless like those types of integrations and um yeah and then so very recently we've been we've been involved in a lot of like really cool um nft style projects that people are working on like art we were kind of found ourselves at the center of the debate. There's a lot of good Gizmodo articles quoting me about <laughs> the NFT environment um, uh, space. And like my background is primarily electrical and environmental engineering. So um, so that's basically uh, where I come from. And I came and I've been in blockchain for the last like, five-ish years, building all sorts of stuff, Creole being one of them. Um, super, super exciting to see this like initiative finally take force because like two and a half years ago nobody was talking about this nobody cared like nobody was this was not even top of mind for people but now it's really just inspiring to see that there's like a lot of, a lot of uptake on this that being said my engineering hat on the criticism and the outrage definitely doesn't match like the the like what's actually happening here so like, there's a lot to be said about that but that's like a completely separate debate um and that's that's like just a raw numbers game. If you want to chat about that, I'm happy to. Because um, I used to come from oil and gas, so you know this is like really small for for me. I'm like guys, this is this is like peanuts in, in the context of what's happening in the world. Um, but it's so so anyway. So I'm I'm, I'm rambling, but basically built this um, this whole system for tokenizing VCS Vera 
carbon tons, um, and they're sub-tokenized on purpose to be able to micro offset them in buildings. So basically all our building control, so think about like an LED, it's not gonna consume a whole ton in a day, but it'll consume like a few times. And then it basically submits a burning transaction, burns those offsets irreversibly, and at that point on like, is owned forever by that building. Um, in the context of subscriptions, it's a little bit simpler. It just does half a ton or a ton or two tons every month. Um, and then that, that's from there. Um, we basically submitted, we, we recently open sourced pretty much everything we've done uh, for the last two years. Uh, we're part of another Gitcoin grant called Cartesi. We've been working on integrating um, verifiable execution inside our hardware systems that are in buildings. And so we said, we saw this coming, it was like right at the heat of the whole debate. And we're like, okay, let's just send them what we have. And, and hopefully like somebody can can make use of it or, or we can maybe collaborate on it. Because ultimately we're working on the background with like a number of other organizations, um, Open Earth Foundation included, et cetera, and a couple others, CO2 can, um, we're trying to basically come up with a carbon standard for doing this and basically really have like a truly foundational platform where everyone can contribute and, and basically be part of. Um, and that's kind of the hardest part of carbon markets. Like, I don't know how, how people really see or what their level of expertise is, but like they're vastly complex. Like it's, it's super, super hard to, to actually even begin to describe certain parts of it. Um, and so we're trying to basically bring like at least an on-chain standard that I'll point to and then be like, okay, this is how we do things. And then from here on out, like everything's got to fit this model. Um, but yeah, so the CVCUs is, is someone linked it in the in the chat. The Connor, yeah, that's that's exactly where we use. We it's live today. I think after the carbon drop, we're about six hundred and twenty-seven tons already done on chain, um, with more coming. Like a few, I think a few thousand more to do. Um, so there's like constant like, and you can verify everything. So like the actual retirement certificate is stored on chain in IPFS. The um, the ton itself, you can check if the offsets done correctly. You can check in VCS as well. The actual retirement certificate is there as well. So it's it's all done in such a way that the whole thing is end to end verified. And because Cosmos is EVM like compatible, we can probably deploy this on Region if we wanted to as well. Um, so we're open to that. I mean, happy to just talk to anyone and see what that they're working on and, and provide input and expertise as as needed. That's awesome. I, yeah. It's, you know, one of the things you mentioned was that, you know, there's a lot of conflicting information out there. Maybe that's a little bit um, off topic, but I think it's right on topic. So, I mean, half, you know, uh, of this grant is about education and helping people understand, um, you know, there's smart people that seemingly conflict with each other in terms of like what's actually going on here. And it, it gets really mm -hmm. fast. So, um, uh, so if people, if people want to reach out, I know we want to give other folks some time on the stage, but if people want to reach out and, and collaborate with you, Josh, what's the best way for them to get in touch with you? Um, email is always easy. Hello at creole.io is always good. Or, or you know, um, yeah, that's probably the easiest way. And then I'm, I'm always answering those emails. So if you sure want to reach out and, and get working on something, that's probably the best way. Awesome. Awesome. Really excited for it. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. I have a quick question, Josh. I, I yeah. can't help but notice. Uh, you probably have like miners running behind you. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So yeah, well, uh, they're they're on they're out of commission, but yeah. Got it. Yeah. So like, uh, uh, Stakefish's sister company is F two Pool, and and you mm -hmm. kind of mentioned the, the the disparity between like what POS networks are having on t in terms of carbon footprint, and right compared to like miners on a POW network. Mm -hmm. um, the the type of measurements that you guys provide is that specifically on kind of like the execution side uh, like from like transactions and smart contracts but or can you also or does creole also have um measurements on like the, the network scale as well as like the blockchain infrastructure service providers that of things right so like estimations on like actual proof of work network infrastructure so this is like a that's part of like central probably the entire debate about whether or not uh, NFTs have an impact on the environment, which undoubtedly they do. It's just the question is how big. Um, so what we do is we do building control specifically. So that's our like things we measure like HVAC, lighting, like anything you can in a building, and that's all tracked on layer two Matic. Um, so we can we can just plug into pretty much anything IoT at this point, and then plug into that, and then figure out infrastructure. So like in F two pool, for instance, like we could probably measure the entire pool and then look at like you know tracking that energy footprint over time and then comparing it against the grid. Because what part of our system also is like, it does real time grid lookups. So it knows the grid intensity of the region it's particularly operating in. So for instance, if a building is downtown London, UK, 
Um, it knows the real time grid intensity of London or and then that region and then calculates its footprint based on like real time stats because it's really hard to come up with like aggregate statistics unless you know what the grid is operating at a specific time. But um, in the context of like actually comparing networks, it's really hard uh, <laughs> because for two reasons. One, geographically, you have no idea where any any miners are. Like it's, it's just impossible to know. Um, and then with that, because you don't know like, where they are, it's very hard to know the grid intensity of that particular region. So there's the best best calculations were done were by our colleagues at Offsetra, and that's carbon.fyi, which basically the methodology, if you read it like from a life cycle analysis perspective, like, this is the environmental nerd in me. Um, basically, the, the methodology makes a lot of good assumptions on like the, the grid intensity splits. So it basically assumes that most of it's happening in, in Asia and it assumes basically a specific grid intensity based on world reports on that. But it's it's good enough in the sense that you can use it for calculating, but it's there's, there's no way to improve that methodology without actually measuring at the site, which is kind of what we're trying to do with buildings. But like obviously mining is a whole different ballgame, but we could definitely try if you, if you want to... Uh, explore that I'm happy to, to to field that as an option but that's more or less it and so that's kind of like that underlying assumption on, on grid intensity and where things are happening is is the center of the whole debate um and you know it, it, there's been many studies done but obviously like as a decentralized network it's nearly impossible to prove any of it so a lot of it is best guesses which i mean uh, i'll let you in on a little climate engineering secret all models are best guesses everybody's guessing <laughs> And we're all trying our best and like there's a lot of educated guesses and people are trying really hard to make you know rounded assumptions on things but that's ultimately what it is at the end of the day and it's not to discredit like you know what it is and, and how, how challenging it's just it, it highlights the point which is it's very challenging and it requires a lot of cooperation to get um to a number that everyone's happy with but yeah totally totally possible it's just there's a lot of math lots of it <laughs> yeah I, I i think it's definitely right Good behavior has to be incentivized, uh, as we know, with like all these consent mechanisms. But um, I, I, yeah, I'll definitely shoot you an email. We've been working, we as Stakefish and F2 Pool have been working on, on something on the blockchain infrastructure provider side of things. And cool. Um, yeah, I, I definitely. I'll shoot you an email. Hello, field.io, right? Sweet. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I'm happy to, happy to hear it. That'd be awesome. I'll get off the stage because I know other people want to talk. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no worries. Can be here all day. Yeah, that was super interesting. interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Josh. Um, yeah, drop crazy. your contact info in the chat and people want to get Cheers, touch. cheers. Thanks, man. All right. Jennifer, can you hear me? Uh, yes, I can hear you. Um, can you see me? Oh, yeah. Cool. Awesome. Um, yeah. Hi, guys. Um, I'm Jennifer. Uh, I just registered yesterday, so in terms of ideas, like not too much right now. But no, I work for Mintgate, and one thing that we've kind of done, well, thing that we've done is uh, we've allowed creators to create, like, upload their NFT or their images, like off chain, and kind of when they're ready, like thinking about the process and really understanding more NFTs, then they can mint it on chain. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of something that we've. Like we've learned a lot about as a lot of creators, uh, they you know are still really new to the process and they're trying to learn about the process, not necessarily um, have no um, a whole entire um, thought process and what they want to do with their NFTs. So just allowing them to kind of like emulate have a sandbox like version. Um, they just have like kind of like a sandbox version where they're you know still like, having experience of kind of minting NFTs, but like not on the chain. Um, it's like an idea that we kind of had. But other than that, I just wanted to say hello um, and just kind of run that idea behind you guys. Yeah, no, I think that's exciting. So I've sort of, I'm probably the least technical person in this whole thing, uh, but I've manually tried to onboard artists, probably a hundred or more artists in the last four years. And a lot of it is uh, just the, the, the difficulty of getting started or set up. Um, so to have a sort of like a sandbox or, you know, an area where people can go in and just kind of get their feet wet and understand what the, the process looks like, but still have a bridge to be able to win, I think is really important. Yeah, actually now, like, I, I mean, a, a lot of things that I've seen is that like artists like try you know, and uh, and so, but they mint already, and because they don't have that sandbox, and and then they talk to more people, and everybody's like, no, this is not how you should do it. So they like, then they like, you know, like pretty much have to like 
you know, make it make burn the tokens and, and, and the NFTs. And it's like, it's, um, it's double the transaction for like one, uh, one thing. So very excited about that. Uh, thing. Awesome. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think we'll get started um, on kind of that uh, first and just thinking through that. Like, do you guys think that it should still be like off chain or should we like integrate um, with something on chain um, still? Yeah. Do you have thoughts on that, Connor? Um, that's a good question. I think I think either way would work. Um, I, yeah, I guess it depends on like the specific solution that you're trying to build there. But I mean, region network might be an option here. Okay. Um, but I think there's also some off chain like solutions and, and different Ethereum side chains that might also work as well. So I'm not sure. Cool. But if anyone else has ideas on that, um, feel free to drop them in chat or get in touch with Jennifer. Cool. Awesome. Well, uh, yeah, that was really, I, I just wanted to say hi. Uh, the best way to reach out to me um, is just uh, through at um, probably Mintgate um, underscore app. Um, I monitor that pretty much, but also my personal, because I'm not sure if the whole team will be um, working on this with me, uh, but uh, my personal is just jkim underscore trend on Twitter. So thank you, guys. That's awesome. You're awesome, Jennifer. Thanks for joining this. Uh, really appreciate your efforts. Thank you. Definitely. Yeah, thanks for having on. All right. Ian, did you figure out the mic and other permissions? <laughs> yes, I did. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, loud and clear. Hey, perfect, perfect. I don't know why my video's not showing up, but I guess that's okay. Um, yes, what's up, guys? Uh, Green FT Hackathon here. That's what's up. This is my comment, air me, so excuse me for the <laughs> for the errors. Um, chilling and chilling. Uh, thank you guys for having me. Yeah, yeah, thanks for being here. My first time on air meet, too. Although I have to admit, usually as, a, as an old gray beard, I get freaked out when there's a new form, but this one's pretty cool. It's pretty straightforward so far. So I guess yeah. good job, or whoever picked it out. Yeah, definitely. I, I definitely feel like the anxiety trying to figure it out. And I'm like, oh, well, let's just let's just go with what we got. So, um, yeah, I guess I'll just drop in. Um, I created what are called the NFT games. And uh, the message is because what really started this was to create a regenerative earth through a game. Um, my mission was to find a uh, basically what I call a green token or a regenerative token to um, have artists mint or to buy NFTs through a platform. So I've been researching, I've been searching Tezos, I've been searching Polygon, I've been researching um, so many different companies and I've been testing the waters with my friend Igly. Um, and we found a, a real solid place. Um, I think Polygon Network with the Matic token is uh, carbon neutral right now. And they are, you know, they're really, really um, amazing for what they're doing. I don't know deep, I'm trying to get a hold of them. I guess they're so backed up because I think there was only like three or four people working until arcane market um joined in with them and what's happening now is uh, a beautiful thing but i'd love to either share my screen if i could figure out how i heard that's an option um yeah it should just be that little up arrow at the bottom of the screen but hopefully the permissions have been oh here's my video i you guys can see my face oh, there you go. <laughs> hi guys <laughs> So yeah. this, to share this would be, you said an arrow? Yeah, it's a little up arrow at the bottom. There's a box, yeah, with an up arrow, kind of in the oh, middle of those. Is. Perfect, perfect. Okay. And then there it is. Perfect. Great, here it is. It's loading. Can you guys see my screen now? Yep. Sweet. Okay, cool. And you guys are seeing this? Yeah, absolutely. Sweet. Okay, this is our homepage at the NFTgames.com. Um, so once you drop in here, we'll have a video to introduce you guys. We're showing right here how it's created by artists, for artists, and for everyone else. Um, the game consists of parables, riddles, challenges that will be within the NFTs unlockable, as well as the other items from the NFT games. Once you receive the three keys, you'll be dropping into the metaverse for the last challenge. The first person to finish all the challenges correctly will be rewarded with all the crypto wallets that consist of 80% of the funds from the NFTs you were purchased. 20% goes back to the artist who are doing work. These are our artists. Here's Jeff Green's.
Oh, you might have froze there, Ian. I think the the combo of screen yeah. sharing might have. Uh, oh. Let's see if, you can, see if we can get Ian back. Ian, come back. It looks really cool. I like the idea of gamifying. Yeah, it does look uh, super cool. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's. So it's a lot of this is just like super intimidating. I think, especially for less technical folks. So the idea of having sort of a gamification system, I think, is really really cool. Totally agree. Yeah, the site design looks really cool. It reminds me of like Burning Man. <laughs> All right, Ian, let's see. I think we're going to pull up Mike next, um, but let's give Ian another minute or two or 30 more seconds, say. Oh, all right. We lost him. Do not see him in the crowd anymore. Maybe his browser crashed or something. All right, let's go to Mike, and then if Ian comes back, we can bring him back on. How's it going, guys? It's going great. How are you doing, Mike? Good. Uh, thanks for having me on here. This is pretty awesome stuff. I've been following the green NFT project for a little bit, a little while here, and um, pretty cool to see that there's uh, stuff like this in the space. Um, honestly, we're we're relatively new on like the the sustainability side of or the sustainability community. Um, so yeah, just stoked to see it here. Um, yeah, so I'm Mike. I'm the uh, partner of Many Uses, which is a self-funded digital product studio. Um, previously, I was the CTO and co-founder of a, a DEX called Radar Relay. Um, and my brother, also business partner, Brandon, who's also on here, uh, him and I founded both of these companies. Um, so after Radar, we kind of saw that there's some opportunity for um, just like some more social impact driven projects in the space. Um, and so we took a little bit of a hiatus after Radar and uh, built our product studio and then realized what we're good at is building products. Um, so we wanted to jump back into the, the crypto space. Um, and basically, Brandon, who's um, more on the creative and design side, he found that like he's got a bunch of artists and a bunch of friends who started seeing the NFTs blow up over the last two years, obviously. And I uh, was just getting asked questions left and right about what they are and how they work. And um, yeah, you know, how do they make money on them? Obviously is the big one there. <laughs> yep. Um, but so we decided to try to just do what we can since we have some background in the space to try to educate people on what these things are and how they work. And, um, you know, we noticed a lot of just a lot of work to be done in how they're built and um, things like that. So the project that we spun up is called Fungi Proof. Um, and I could share my screen, but I don't want uh, the same thing to happen to me. So I'll let you guys go to fungiproof.com and, and check it out. Um, but the idea is really just to try to get some information out about what these things are. And we do that by sort of taking different pieces and coming up with like a, a rubric to try to grade NFTs. Um, so right now we've picked a few different categories like um, the immutability of it and kind of like the sovereignty. So do you own your assets and are they going to stick around after you create NFT? Um, how the metadata is structured and making sure that the metadata is like following standards that exist in the ecosystem um, so that you can, you know, get some cross, some overlap between different exchanges and, and more visibility, um, which also kind of ties into the marketability side, which is one of the other categories. Um, and then eco impact obviously is a really big one for us. So, um, oh, thanks for pulling that up. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't think my, uh, I don't think my browser should crash, but, um, but yeah, so this is, this is what you're talking about, right? Yep. Here. And I can post the link so you can plug it in there and see if we can get a, get a score going. So is this work at like a, a platform level? Like I can go and figure you know, it so like as a, only a semi-technical guy, I get questions about like, what's the difference between the smart contract on, you know, super rare versus nifty gateway versus rareable. And I'm kind of like, Oh, you know, like, cause I, I mean, I just don't know at that level. Right. And then there's some deeper questions about what are the implications of how 
those um, contracts and formats work relative to um, the environmental impact, environmental impact, but also to um, how the the images are stored and things like that. There's a lot of sort of faith-based, um, you know, like, I hope this is sort of like a standard. So are you giving more insight, um, you know, for, for collectors and artists into how all of that stuff is here? Yeah, so that's the goal eventually. This is kind of like our first iteration. Um, and actually try to hit submit again, because I feel like maybe maybe we had a, there we go, oh. okay. Um, yeah, there's, you know, reliability to nodes and stuff. I think we're in fear and occasionally it just times out. Um, but, uh, to answer your question, yeah, that that's the goal eventually is, you know, we're starting at like a really high level here trying to just give you a little bit of insight, but, um, you know, ideally we can cover all the different pieces. So like, um, yeah, it, is it ERC 721 and like kind of what is that? How does that work? And what's the difference between that and an 1155? And, um, you know, eventually, hopefully, like others have mentioned, we can cover like hey, we recommend you mint on layer two solution like Matic or Scale or Immutable or something along those lines, which has a better carbon impact. And um, so, yeah, I, I don't know if I answered your question. Yeah. But hopefully the idea is really just to to provide all the information and, and give people the tools to find the right platform. Yeah, it's really hugely needed, right, very, Fanny? I think, you know, you and I are tied yeah, into the community. I like, if we were in a home room, I would hug you, Mike, because this is like very <laughs> much really what uh, actually we had a call uh, right before this one with Judy uh, has uh, with um, um, if you guys might remember there was uh, the blockchain art directory bad uh, oh, yeah. was like an early experiment to do that and uh, and and it stopped because. Uh, it, it was impossible to get the information. Like, and like now that I have like some questions from artists, clients, collectors, like I'm down to reading like the terms of use sometimes to like of the platforms, and most of the time I can't find what I'm looking for. And yeah. I was very excited when there was this website called CheckMyNFT.com came up came out. Mm -hmm. Except uh, you realize pretty quickly that. The only thing they do is uh, whenever it's on IPFS, they recommend that you go on Airweave. Our, right. our, our um, yep. And it's like, okay, fine, but like there's so many others, right? So, uh, and same thing with royalties, you know, artists don't know like when they go and it's a little on, on not off topic uh, for, uh, for the ecological impact, but uh, artists don't know that their royalties are not portable from one plant to the other. Like they discover it when they actually do it with a sale, which is sort of scary. Yeah, um, definitely. So super bullish on um, that project. So, yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah. Um, I guess just to cover specifically in terms of the, the grants themselves. Um, so, we're actually working on both the awareness and uh, the solution grant. And since we kind of, we sort of have a, a initial project here, we wanted to um, take it a little bit of a step further. So for the awareness side, we are really diving more deep into the eco impact side. Um, and so as Josh had mentioned, it's really, really extremely difficult to kind of come up with the metrics and the information on, especially on like the, uh, the chain side of things. Um, but so we're gonna do as much as we can just based on research that already exists there. Um, and kind of highlight some of the data that already exists out there and, and aggregate some of that. Um, but we're also really deeply focused on like the storage side of things um, and kind of the hosting. I think that's something that actually gets overlooked a little bit, which is like specifically, you know, even going as far as saying what what is the impact of, um, you know, hosting a file on GCP, for example, you know, does GCP do carbon offsets? Do they have renewable energy at their server farms? Things like that. Um, so we want to take it that additional step on the storage side just to kind of cover everything that's going on um, and then obviously offer solutions that are helpful. And, um, you know, it's really interesting to kind of highlight the difference between like, you know, obviously our wave is great. It's a really amazing project for immutability, but what is the impact on the environment of something that lasts forever? Right. So you have something stored mm. in storage. Maybe that's not necessarily what you actually are going for. Maybe you'd rather be able to have the ability to put that thing down at some point and, and have a smaller footprint someday. Um, so we, the, we're going to aggregate all that information basically and create this rubric that's on the awareness side and then take that rubric and, and kind of combine it into what we've already here and um, put it into like a little embeddable badge. So the idea would be you can sign it with your wallet and verify that you own the NFT um, and hopefully eventually 
as a platform, you can sign in with the platform's contract wallet and verify that you have a platform. And the platform itself can get a grade, um, kind of like a certificate for the platform. And then also as the NFT, a certificate for the NFT. So you'd have a little embed that you could put on a website or um, you know, on your, your link tree or whatever it might be um, to show your NFT and show its immutability or its eco impact grade. So that's the, hmm. the solution we're going for. Super exciting. Yeah, I th they're just, it meets a lot of my yeah. needs as a user and, and the people that I get a lot of questions from interviews and artists and people that, that I just can't answer. And at first I felt dumb and then I realized very few people can answer them. Um, so, you know, we need people to come together and work on, on this part. So really exciting. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks guys. Yeah. Um, and yeah, yeah I agree, Josh. Yeah. The, yeah, of course. Cool. Um, I do want to give Ian another chance to share a screen if, if Ian, you can hear me. Um, but Mike, thank you so much. Uh, this looks awesome. Uh, really excited to see how it progresses. Thanks guys. Feel free to drop any contact info in the chat uh, for people to reach you. Yeah, we'll do. Cheers. All right, Ian. Hey guys, how's the Wi-Fi I'm doing? Back. <laughs> back. It's doing good. It's doing good. I took out some um, browsers. <laughs> it's uh, it's doing good. I, I don't know if I should share the screen or if we should just. I could just kind of shill it as I go, or if you guys want to whip it up yeah, as well. If you, if you send the link, um, I can I can share my screen. Okay, what's, cool. What's I just uh, dropped it in the comments. I dropped the uh, the link in the comments. But um, yeah. So I'll just go as I go to and how naturally organically flows. Um, yeah. So for me, I've been doing uh, festivals in Las Vegas for many years, and um, when I saw the NFT space, I saw how could it be to um, incorporate what I do. What I do is kind of regenerative earth work and uh, sustainable energy um, through mycelium networks and other uh, types of uh, plants to eco to friendly to great water systems to so just creating a sustainable Bay community. So um, this is what the NFT games is all about. It's about coming together as a community and joining and having fun with a game, but also, you know, learning and uh, spreading the awareness on what's going on with the planet and our footprint and the things we can do right to make a change. And um, so the, for the artists, I'm an artist myself, I'm a musician. And when I meet these artists that are so humble and loving and beautiful, I just, I, I see their work and I see their energy and they're, if they're so shy to come up and talk, you know, it's pretty hard to do this, especially as an artist. It's like, you got to become a marketer and do everything else that you just want to paint. You just want to do 3d art. You just want to do your thing. So um, I invite them into the space and I say, Hey, you know what? I would love to showcase your art. I would love to put you up. You resonate with the message. Um, Peter Griggs, a mute, amazing, um, I think a gallery artist in France. And he's been doing this digital art on a computer in the nineties to, kind of create a blueprint so he can paint it and then he kind of disposes the digital art and then you know i think somebody appro approached him in 2017 was like hey man you can you know do this like tea thing and then 2019 came around and he's just so he's and he's humble he doesn't really talk and people bring him up onto the stage so i'm creating an artist showcase to showcase these artists and what i'm doing is um i'm creating a team of people so we're working in the metaverse with the central land and crypto box um, not not directly, but my buddies have uh, land there. So what we're doing is we're building and we're creating galleries. So the three keys is about the three keys of knowledge, kind of um, uh, whether it's art, poetry, or music. Um, and when we kind of come back into this this um, this art of ourselves, this is what's driving the culture really forward, right? It's it's not the politics, it's not the other stuff, it's not these centralized systems. It's really the people. And when we take our power back. I think that's when community can really, really have a beautiful thing. So um, I see the I see where it's going with money right now. How money's becoming decentralized from central, central banking systems that really have been destroying the earth for a very long time. And um, I think it's really my duty to step into the. It's kind of like a uh, mystery school of esoteric knowledge of you know, ancient knowledge all the way from you know. It could be uh, Sumerian and Egyptian to, you know, even just uh, Da Vinci and um, Shakespeare. And what I do is, you know, I test people's knowledge. So it is a very knowledgeable game. You have to kind of, you know, dig in, find some stuff. It ain't just like, hey, you know, like a lottery or anything like that. But, um, you know, once they get in there, then they have to find the Easter egg NFT. And Easter egg in gaming technology in terms is kind of like, you know, the hidden gem. If you can find the hidden gem in the game, you kind of, beat the game without trying to beat the game. And that's the symbology here. That's the metaphor um, is that 
we're not kind of doing this for the money. We're not doing this to win. We're doing this to coke together in symbiosis. And I think, um, you know, we're so new in this, but we, we already have so many good artists and so many good developers that we're going to be dropping the first NFT games on Earth Day, April 22nd. And I'm so excited and uh, anybody can play and I want to make it accessible to anybody. Um, of course, you have to have a crypto wallet or anything like that. But um, we're, we're, we're calling in uh, help, we're calling in workers or people that just want to, you know, uh, put their hands in the dirt, uh, metaphorically <laughs> in this case, um, but to together in a community, right? And um, so right now at our stages, what we're doing is we're designing places in crypto voxels where you have to find the hidden pyramid because once you get the three keys, then you'll get the link to go into the um, the decentral decentral lands and everything like that. And, that's, and then once you find that hidden NFT, then you'll be stowed with the key phrase of the wallet and you'll get the incentive and things like that. But really it's to raise awareness and uh, what's going on with the planet right now. And I'm still looking into um, different types of NFTs or minting process that we can do with token or carbon neutral. I think uh, Matic, is, Matic is a token right now that's carbon neutral. I'm not too sure how deep that really goes with carbon neutral terminology, but my goal is to do something regenerative. Um, my buddy that I'm talking to, his name's Vaughn, he's, He's doing something crypto mining in algae into where it feeds back into the uh, ecosystem and, and it helps the trees and it does so much stuff for the animals. So to regenerate is like the key, right? And so I'm just calling in help and people who have this other knowledge that I might not have. I'm really new in this space, but I, I feel that this is the time. Cool. Fanny, did you want to say something? Oh, wow. Yeah, I did. Um, I, I'm going to share in the chat. There was this uh, early game that was uh, done at East Berlin, like now, like two or three years ago. Uh, and it was a pretty good like, um, like attempt to gamify also the awareness. Uh, and at the time, it was only the blockchain uh, okay. uh, part, but it was not linked to real carbon offset. But I feel mm. like this like, might be a low hanging fruit in like some ideas that they had. So. Oh, I like I that. I like that. Yeah, I didn't want to do it based off the Ethereum network. Um, so my goal was to actually do it from, you know, like a Matic token. I'm going to mint 10,000 NFTs on the Polygon network. I don't know if you guys are familiar, but um, yeah. And then so when they get those NFTs, they're going to have to get the unlockable. It's going to lead them to the site. I didn't show you guys the other parts of the site because we're still not, it's not fully developed, but it'll be ready for when it launches and people beached into a whole immersive experience. We want to make it as VR as we can. So Somnium Space has a whole VR headset. You get in there and you get to walk around. And, and what's cool is that we, we have an art gallery and you have to walk up the stairs and there's artists work on the walls. All their NFTs are on the walls. And then we're going to hide the, you know, the Easter egg on the very top floor. So you're going to have to walk through the art gallery. And how cool is that to promote the artists and to like give them a chance to be seen? Because there's, a, there's so much going on in this NFT space that not too many people are being seen. There's so much like... This it's not. I don't really see like a real good organization. Uh, at least in my, I've only been in this for like a month. So um, we're really seeing more stuff happen. Like it's so new, it's so real, and uh, I can't wait yeah. to drop these games. No, and, and there's so many like new things happening. And uh, and again, that game was like when there was no other chain, you know, on this own. There was no layer to make at all. Yes. Yes. Uh, thanks for sharing. Yeah. yeah, I think being new to the space is in a way is a bit of an advantage, right? Because we all get used to some of the things that are confusing and complicated and they start to feel normal. But really, uh, if we want other people to understand how to engage, right, we need to remember what it feels like when, when you're new and build um, solutions around that, right? And I think gamifying is a great way to, um, to sort of reduce the, the scary tech barrier, this kind of stuff, right, and help educate people and, and help them engage. Very cool, man. Very cool. Yes. Where are you, you located? So much, thank you, guys. I'm in so Las Vegas, Nevada. Las Vegas. Cool. Very cool. Yeah, Las nice. Vegas. Yeah, I, 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 I said this after you dropped, but I said this after you dropped, but your the website just reminds me of like a virtual Burning Man. I love it. <laughs> I feel like that's kind of the, the vibe you're going for there. <laughs> yes, definitely. Thank you so much, Connor. I appreciate that. <laughs> yes. Awesome. Yeah, super cool. I'm excited. So Earth Day is going to be the the first the first game. Yeah, so we'll be dropping the 9,099 NFTs through the Matic Network, which is very like it's so rapid, it's so fast, and I think it costs like under a dollar. 
So there's going to be no gas fees basically yeah. for anybody. And that's the thing is if I want to make this so accessible and one of my inspirations is the movie um, Ready Player One, which was a book. And I'm sure you guys got that vibe from the three mm -hmm. keys and the Easter egg, right? Such an amazing movie. And um, that's the first thought when I thought of NFTs. I don't know why I thought of an Easter egg hunt. And then I saw the movie and I was like, oh my God, this is like perfect. So I started integrating that in. And what I noticed with Holiday and how he did that in the book or the movie is that anybody who had the, who had the headset and had the thing, they could join. And that's how I kind of want this is anybody I want to you know, have it as low as a dollar to buy it. And, you know, I want it to be basically free. If, as long as you have a MetaMask or some type of crypto wallet or anything like that, you can join in. And that's the tools that it takes to get into the Oasis, right? They need to have this. Tool. So I want everybody in the world to have fun, but I also want to educate and I want to guide the river. I'm seeing where the NFT has so much power and taking our power back. And so if we can, as artists, guide this into it, um, a regenerative system for the planet that right there can do so much. Um, so what we're doing is for every NFT purchased, we're going to plant one tree. Um, and as well as have. Oh, no. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> uh, you're back. You're, okay. We got you. <laughs> sweet, sweet. Okay. Sometimes too high of energy will do that. <laughs> yeah. Um, Yes. This is awesome, man. Though I'm I'm really excited to to follow along and see how it goes. And and yeah, Nick, or now Polygon, I guess, is awesome. We we work with them pretty closely. Uh, they've done some some hackathons and some like grant stuff on Gitcoin, and so really excited about uh, just their whole tech stack. And and you know, I think they did a bunch of launches recently, so it should be interesting to. Check out the art yeah, battle. Those. Check out the what, Fanny? Sorry. Art art art. <laughs> I can't say it. Like art battles, like it launches. Oh, the, it's like a uh, collaboration um, between artists, um, which actually broke at the launch. Like it just all like froze, and everybody was like crazy in the Discord. I don't think it was a polygon like problem, to be honest. I don't know what it was, but I think it was more on the art battles like side. But um, but still, it was a way to test uh, polygon, to be honest. Um, yeah, yeah, I would love to. Um, but, you know, uh, if anybody wants to shoot anything at me or, or let me know of any type of things I need to look into, or if you guys have any tokens in mind that are you know, that would be a good fit for these games or anything, I'm so open to co create or cross pollinate and calling on all the help. The team is really doing a lot of work. We have Michaela who just dropped the 72 names of God. She's amazing. And um, yeah, we're just trying to give back to the people and to cause awareness at the same time. Awesome. Yeah, I think that's the spirit. Try to keep it open, and, and you know, uh, we all learn from each other and uh, find ways to collaborate, right? Yes, sir. Exactly. Um, awesome. All right. Well, we're a bit over time here, um, but Ian, yeah, thank you so much for sharing, man. Uh, this looks super cool, and thank, um, you thank you to everyone who stuck around uh, for the whole time. I know we're a bit over time, but um last couple things so we'll post a recording of this on youtube and i'll share it in like the hackathon square if, if anyone wants to check it out um and, and then i guess if you guys have any other questions feel free to drop them in town square i have to hop off to another call but i'll leave like the air meet open when we end the session so you can hang out at the tables if anyone wants to chat or or meet one there so uh so yeah thanks everyone and, uh, for, and if for you haven't in. like join uh, join the discord as well uh, I'm trying to get the link <laughs> now uh, before we, we close the room. But uh, um, yeah, even after the hackathon, we can uh, continue continue there. Awesome. Thanks for setting this up, Connor. Definitely. I really like the, uh, the format. It was great. <laughs> yeah, Bye. it makes a lot of fun. Awesome, guys. Cool. Well, everyone have a, a good day and good luck on your projects. Yeah, they're awesome projects. Thanks for Super sharing. Super excited.